Nevada's all-important gaming industry is rapidly changing and growing, and we explore how here at G2E this week on Nevada Week. Support for Nevada Week is provided by Senator William H. Hernstadt. Welcome to Nevada Week. I'm Amber Renee Dixon, joining you from G2E, the Global Gaming Expo at the Venetian. Ahead, we're going to show you some of the hottest developments in gaming right now. But first, we want to check in with Howard Stutz, gaming and tourism reporter for the Nevada Independent. Howard, thank you for joining Nevada Week again on location now. Yeah, on location, and it's kind of loud in here. <laughs> a, little bit, a little different from a few years ago. A lot of energy, yeah, compared to when we had you on last. That was with Kip Ortenberg and that was coming out of COVID. Yeah, we were, what do you think when you see it now? Well, it, it, they're thinking this will be the largest one. Last year was it broke some records, I guess, for attendance. They think this year will break records, and it seems like it already. I mean, there's excitement around a lot of the new games. Uh, just walked by uh, the Light and Wonder booth, and they got a Squid Games, a slot machine based on Squid Game. I don't know how you clean up the blood on the floor <laughs> of the casino afterward, but yeah. There, so there's some, there's some new products here. There's some changes in the industry and a lot of you know a lot of new a lot of excitement so you know we've had but in, look at in nevada we've had 30 straight months of a billion dollars or more in gaming revenue and so, we're going to talk about how long yep. that can last but when you do walk around and you talk to people at the booths what's standing out to you they just i think they just want to see it's like every g2 you want to see what's new uh you're you're what you do here with the companies you're here the sales here a lot of the product you're not going to see on a casino floors until um you know until next year right now Aristocrat, for example, and I know you're going to visit Aristocrat, they uh, have an NFL slot machine that they've teased for the last two years. Last year, it was hidden. This year, they have the prototype, two of the games that are out, and they have the prototypes, and a lot of it will be out by the uh, Super Bowl. So it's a... And why is that so significant to have an NFL-themed slot machine? Well, Amber, you're a sports person like yeah. me. You know the NFL would, it was like, it, it would, you, Vegas, eh, like this. They didn't even want to talk about gambling and... Uh, and 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 the uh, and and the NFL now not only with sports betting, they have this NFL slim slot, themed slot machine. I went around and programmed them all for the Los Angeles Chargers so I can get the Chargers <laughs> on there. But it's a it's it's a significant move by the NFL, and I'm wondering if this will, we'll see other leagues see the opportunity by this. The NFL, let's face it, that's it's the behemoth. The big kahuna, yeah. yeah. And so this is a this is a if it's if it's successful for the NFL, maybe we're going to see the NBA do it. You know, I don't know, maybe the, maybe maybe internationally, you know, I asked about the Premier Soccer League or something like that. So yeah. we'll see what happens there. All right. Among some of the standout speakers at G2E was MGM Resort CEO Bill Hornbuckle. He talked about the recent cyber attack that MGM faced. What did he say? Well, it was, fun. It was interesting because last week MGM put out a very carefully worded um, SEC filing, explained what happened with the cyber attack that... They, um, you know, they lost customer data. They were down. He was a little more uh, untethered to the lawyers, <laughs> you know, in his, in, his, in his discussion with Contessa Brewer from CNBC. Said it, it actually took the systems down for, you know, four or five days, and not just on the Strip, but this is regionally where they, you know, eight states where they have casinos. They went back to basics. You know, it, like he said, when he was an employee, you know, coming up in the gaming industry, you didn't have computers or technology. You wrote out um, hotel, uh, you know, hotel reservations by hand. You did everything by everything, you know, on type and pay. You didn't do have computers, so they kind of went back to a lot of that. But it took a while to get everything back up, and now they're back operating. It's, they said it's going to cost them about 100 million. They believe in uh, adjusted cash flow, during, you know, for the for the for the loss. But that will be covered by cyber insurance, cybersecurity insurance they have. Of course, their cyber and security premiums are gonna shoot up to the roof. Right. But it was a wake-up call for the industry, for you know, seeing both MGM and Caesars, two of the three largest operators on the Strip, get hit by cyber attacks in the last, you know, during September. And right. they handled them differently, of course. You know, he also talked about another topic you've been reporting on, and that is the culinary union, its potential strike. Uh, what is the latest that he said on those negotiations? Well, he actually said was a little, he said that the CEO is him and of the three companies. So it's like him, the CEO of Caesar, CEO, CEO of, of Wynn, 
have, ta have been talking with the uh, Culinary Union. He believes there'll be a, a deal done, they'll get to a deal. The Culinary announced on Monday, they're gonna picket, uh, informational pickets on the Strip this week. Uh, they're gonna ask customers not, or and visitors not to cross the picket line for two hours on like on Thursday, 10, 10 to, you know, t starting at 10 and five. Hornbuckle mentioned those informational pickets are going to happen, and then we'll just, you know, and but he believes this this will be done. There will be a deal reached. They'll get the contract done, and we won't see a strike in the middle of Formula One, which is the last thing we want to see. Out there. Right, and the culinary union argues that they should be benefiting from the record gaming revenue that these companies are taking in. As you mentioned, in August, Nevada gaming revenue reached $1 billion for the 30th straight month. How long can this last, Howard? It it seems it's not, you know, you're going to see ebbs and flows. I mean, we've had record months throughout the last 30, you know, last 20, last, yeah, basically the last 18 months, last year and a half, we've had record numbers. And we saw that this year. There was still a huge month in like June and July, the second largest, but it was down because the largest month occurred a year earlier. So it was actually a down month, you know, when you look at the numbers. I think we'll see billion dollars, you know, statewide, you know, you know, for the next, you know, at least into next year, and then we'll see what happens if things start to settle back, if a recession happens. We don't know what's going to happen there. Obviously, what's, what's going on in, in, in Israel, in, in the Middle East this past week, right. could perpetuate a recession. We don't know. So that's going to be one of the challenges we'll face here. Do you get any ideas that casino operators are preparing for a recession? Uh, in some ways, they are. They're always, they always have to be. Um, but I think you know visitation is still up. We're seeing good numbers from uh, from um, uh, on the strip in terms of visitation. Last month was was back to almost the normal totals that we saw before the pandemic. Formula One is going to be a ridiculously record weekend. I will make a prediction for you, Amber. Uh, as you said, uh, last month or August numbers, the strip hit it was like over like 853 million dollars in gaming revenue. That was a record. There's a chance the strip alone could do a billion dollar in gaming billion dollars in gaming revenue in November because of the attention and the big big money play that's going to be coming in because of Formula One. The airport has already set has already expanded its private jet landing areas and parking areas for these big jets that are going to be coming in from a, from you know from Europe and and the Middle East and Asia because that's what Formula One brings in. There are people going to be paying the million dollar a night rate for a hotel room for a suite at the Wynn, but they're not going to be paying that. They're actually going to put about, you know, whatever, five, ten million dollars into the bank, into the casino cage to play off of. That's Ooh. how they get those rooms. So I think, I mean, there's the possibility. We'll see that. We'll see if I'm right. If I'm wrong, oh, well, I'm wrong. But I just think it just seems that's the trend it's going toward right now. It's such a, a big event. We've never seen anything like it with Formula One. I mean, it's, there's a lot of it's brought a lot of attention to the U.S., and, and it's very popular in the Europe and the Middle East. Howard Stutz of the Nevada Independent, thank you so much for your time. Anytime, Amber. Thanks for having me on. I'm with Ryan Scott of Aristocrat Gaming, and this is perhaps one of the most anticipated product launches of G2E, the NFL-themed slot machine. Tell me about it. Show me how it works. Yeah, tons of excitement, uh, both at the show and, and so far in the field where these have been placed. And uh, NFL slot machine, um, every game that we've developed, we've developed a full suite of games. So we have six games that we're showing at G2E that are going to be on floors before the end of the season this year, cool. starting with Super Bowl jackpots, which we're sitting at right now on our King Max cabinet. So this is a, a game right here, Super Bowl jackpots, that the player has the opportunity to select their team. So every game that we're developing has every every team inside of it so a player can walk up and play their team. So. Okay, so let's do the Raiders since All we're right. in Las Vegas. Oh, how neat. So there you go. Love now we're playing it. a Raiders slot Highlights machine. as well. Of course. We worked with the NFLPA as well to make sure that we had game footage in the game. So every team has over six minutes of game footage. So players are going to see all sorts of sights and sounds that they would experience while being at the game. That's incredible because for so many years the NFL was anti-gaming. Uh, but then the Raiders relocated here. The U.S. Supreme Court decision to legalize sports betting across the country certainly helped. How difficult was it to get the NFL on board with this? That's right. It definitely opened up a door for us to um, engage the NFL and, and bring a, a powerful brand like NFL to uh, slot floors. So um, the NFL and the NFL PA worked very closely with us to create uh, what you're seeing today. So it's been exciting. Very neat. I'm going to try it out myself. All right, give it a spin. 
a lot of Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but uh, it's switched over. Hey, almost. I got a little bit, huh? That's right. You got a little win, and you'll <laughs> notice that instead of some of the Royals that you might see in a slot machine, we've replaced it with stadium food. So you're going to see beers, nachos, pizzas, hot dogs. Um, things that players would expect to see at a football game. So apropos. Okay, so you teased this last year with that giant football helmet, which you brought back this year. Now that people have actually gotten to get their hands on it, what has the feedback been? It's been phenomenal. So we've seen uh, early installs be really a center of energy on a slot floor. So I've personally gone out and see a number of them and uh, you'll see crowds gathered around and, and cheering on players and sometimes booing them if they miss a field goal in the field goal kicking feature, which is uh, pretty fun to see. So it's, it's been really exciting and it's been received very well. Now we're gonna kick some field goals for cash. Okay. And if you make the field goal, you win. Awesome. And one other thing I want to show you while we're kicking field goals here is you can actually charge your cell phone as we're playing. How do I do that? Just put it right here on the wireless charger, and there you go. Oh, how neat. High tech. One last question for you. The demographic that this is attracting, I would think it would be just the typical male football watcher. Is that the case? It's not, no. NFL is, uh, is a brand that resonates with an extremely broad demographic, so um, we've seen everybody playing this game, and when we uh, went live with this game at M Resort earlier this month, we actually saw the first four players were all females. So it appeals to a very broad demographic. It's really exciting. Oh, that's so cool. Ryan Scott with Aristocrat Gaming, thank you so much for showing us thank this you. game. Thanks. I'm with Phil O'Shaughnessy with IGT, and Phil, it is obvious what IGT is excited about this year. Tell me the backstory behind this Whitney Houston machine. Yes, indeed, Amber. IGT pioneered licensed slot themes more than 25 years ago with Wheel of Fortune. Okay. And now, yes, you're right. The focal point of G2E 2023 for us is this brand new Whitney Houston slot on our brand new Skyrise 55 cabinet. And you know something, a licensed theme is really a mixture of art and science. If you think about the art, obviously we have a gorgeous display here. We have a social opportunity with the music playing throughout while players are enjoying and a shared top screen. It's beautiful. But the truth of the matter is to successfully do a licensed theme, what you wanna make sure you do is have some sort of relevance. In this case, iconic elements like stars and albums that fall down into the reels while the music is playing. There's a very close tie there, right? With the art and the way this is packaged with the Grammys, yeah. you get the idea. Tell and me in, about the science aspect. Absolutely, in terms of the science, it's fantastic. So the woman who runs our studio in Reno, Nevada, where this game was made, collaborated with the woman who runs our global licensing. She's based here in Las Vegas. So great female leaders coming together and putting together a game that really resonates with the core slot demographic, right? We do a lot of research to make sure that a licensed theme will resonate with the slot demographic. On top of that, we actually pulled some secret sauce from a game that has already performed exceptionally well in the marketplace. Wheel developed of Fortune? By the same, actually, no, it's called Prosperity Link. Okay. And it was developed in Reno, Nevada by the same person who is behind the development of this. So when you have that secret sauce integrated into the machine, you know, it's probably set up to do pretty well for your casino operator partners, and you can present it to them with absolute confidence. I love the Nevada connection. When will this be available in casinos? This will be available in Q2 of 2024. And Amber, I saved the best part for last. Did I mention the huge jackpots that this pays Ooh, out? In this wait. case, we're, we're queued up for half a million dollars playing on house money at G2E. Wow. So this will be a lot of fun for players with some really big jackpot excitement as well. IGT certainly known for slot machines this one will become very popular i imagine but will of fortune already igt also a leader though in video poker and yes. let's go take a look now at your new bar top great so phil some of our viewers may have seen this bar top already out and about in southern nevada but what's new about it that's right the peak bar top from igt is all over Nevada, in the bars, the taverns, the casinos. In fact, IGT has enjoyed a commanding share in video poker for over three decades now. So think about when you go to the bar though, Amber, you might wanna play some video poker, maybe some keno or slots. 
but you might be watching sports. I know you're a big sports fan. I most definitely so, am when I go to the bar watching what sports. What we've done is integrate sports betting into the bar top now. So here wow. I am enjoying a little video poker, and now I can just switch over and decide, hey, what games do I want to bet on right now? I'm feeling good, I'm gonna do a parlay. I think I'll hit this one for the spread, this one, this one, and you can see my bet slip is starting to fill up over here. Wow. And then what I'm gonna do is just place that bet, confirm that bet, it tells me how much I will win for what I've wagered, and it's gonna print out my slip. Oh, that's so cool. And you know what? I can even watch the game right here on the screen if I want to, or just watch the game in the bar and play slots or video poker. That is neat. Everything all in one. So yes. right now it's only at a specific casino in Wisconsin. Yes, that's correct. But this will be implemented as Time all progresses. over the place, very much like we've done with video poker. You can expect to see this in all the states where video poker and sports betting are legal. And this bar top in particular, what kind of research went into it? Oh, extensive research. It's a great question because I've told you before that uh, IGT is very research-based and content-driven, right? It's one thing to make a bar top and show it to a pub owner. It's one thing to show it to a casino operator. We went so far as to show this to the bartenders themselves and said, is this an ergonomic design that's gonna work for you while you're working in the bar? Is the lighting on the back good enough so you know when to comp a player a drink? Ah. This type of thing, we got wonderful feedback and actually modified this quite a bit before it went to market. Based on the bartender's advice, Indeed. I'm sure they were happy. Phil O'Shaughnessy, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Amber. I'm with Jared Crosby of Konami, and Jared, I understand this is the big product launch for this G2E Dimension 43 by 3. What makes it special? Uh, well, the size of it, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so it's over uh, nine feet tall. Wow. Uh, features uh, three 43-inch LCD screens, 4K graphics. Look um, at that graphic. Yeah, so you can see. Um, why we believe it's going to be popular. It's, you know, the size of the screens, the graphic looks really sharp and really visual. And I'm going to go ahead and, oh, I got to select my denomination. One penny. And so it's button. big in other ways too. Giant spin button. Yep. And then this allows for two people. That's yeah. a popular feature. That's right. So we, we sell uh, this machine with a uh, two-seater bench seat. So what that gives is you know, play comfort. So couples can sit together and play the machine. They've got a spin button each. So they can they can play together, which uh, and I'm this is available to. now on the Venetian yeah, floor. It is. That's right. Yeah, and this is our official launch of the cabinet at, at this show. And there is another machine you want to show me. Let's go take a look at that. Now. Okay. All right. So Jared, what is this game? So this is um, Buzzer. Uh, it's a um, what Buzzer is. It's a uh, it's a gaming show channel. It features old uh, game shows such as. Um, Betty White's in it. Yeah, Betty White. As you see. <laughs> That's Betty White on Family Feud. Okay. Um, it's got card sharks and another game called uh, Beat the Clock. All right. So the game features in the, in the game are based around those uh, gaming shows. What has your research shown? Is there an appetite for this kind of nostalgia? Yeah, we believe so. A lot, a lot of the players are older. And so we believe something like this, it, the nostalgia of the game will uh, bring them to the game. and. You know, the way we would design the game, it's, it's fun to play, and I think everyone will enjoy it. So Konami has most of its offices in Japan, but there is a location here in Las Vegas. What advantage, if any, does that give Konami to be based here? Uh, great advantage. It's a gaming capital of the world. You know, it's got resort casinos, local casinos. Um, with that, it brings a large, diverse, and experienced workforce that we, we rely on. Uh, we have over 500 employees in our office here. Um, and of course the market here, we, you know, all the research we need, we can go, all our staff can go out there and play games and... And see it firsthand. And see it firsthand, exactly. Jared Crosby with Konami, thank you so much for your time. Okay, thank you. Thank you to Aristocrat Gaming, IGT, and Konami for sharing their time with Nevada Week. And we now want to share something special with you. As we continue to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month, we are proud to bring you a preview of a new show being produced by Vegas PBS focused on Southern Nevada's Latino community. 
The host of that show, Maria Silva, joins us now from our Nevada Week studios with more on Bienvenidos a Las Vegas. Gracias, Amber. Bienvenidos a Las Vegas. Welcome to Las Vegas is a show near and dear to my heart for so many reasons. Mi familia, the Silva family, has been in Las Vegas since 1981. In Bienvenidos a Las Vegas, I'll introduce you to families who have lived here for many, many generations. They are entrepreneurs, educators, entertainers, and historians with extraordinary stories to tell. Tom, we're back at school for a very important history lesson. All right, let's do it. <laughs> let's talk about this 18-year-old Mexican scout, Rafael Rivera. He comes here, he's on that mesa overlooking all that beauty. He is credited with giving us our name, Las Vegas. Yeah, well, you know, that's, it's not unusual that he called it Las Vegas because that means meadows, and he was looking at a green wash. You know, it's still green to this day. Mr. Tom Rodriguez is one of the most trusted historians when it comes to Latinos and Hispanics in Nevada and has even written several books. Well, that's the thing with history. It's always there, but if nobody records it, it, it almost sort of doesn't exist. Making sure the history of 150 Latinos living in Southern Nevada was recorded, the next generation of historians. At UNLV, I met up with fellow rebel Lawrence Bañuelos Benitez to talk about UNLV's student-led oral history project, Latinx Voices of Southern Nevada. You can't really talk about Las Vegas without talking boxing yes. as well. I'm a big boxing fan. I, I grew up watching boxing with my parents um, and my family. It was always a big event. Uh, the early days of watching Oscar de la Hoya, yeah. right? Hearing stories. Julio Cesar Chavez. Julio Cesar Chavez, <laughs> hearing those stories from my dad. Um, so one of the ones that I really loved to do was when I got to sit down with legendary boxing referee Joe Cortez. Joe, top of my game, but when I got inducted to the Hall of Fame, uh, with Julio Cesar Chavez, Mike Tyson, Teresa Stallone, Casa Zou, and Nashville Berenstein, I said to myself, I'm on top of my game. I want to go out while I'm still on top. I don't want to be pushed out. From UNLV, I headed to a neighborhood which holds a special place in my heart. Bienvenidos a East Las Vegas. At the East Las Vegas Community Center, I met up with Councilwoman Olivia Diaz, the first Latina elected to the Las Vegas City Council. Councilwoman Diaz grew up in East Las Vegas and shares what makes this neighborhood, also known as the Rafael Rivera neighborhood, so special. The East Las Vegas Community Center just turned 20 years old and we gave it much needed love. Every now and again we'll celebrate September 16th which is a big to do for the community. It's the Mexican independence and so with the Mexican consul we come and we do the celebración del grito hence why we have that <laughs> wonderful bell back there and now we actually have something that is ceremonial. From East Las Vegas to the Arts District in downtown Las Vegas, that's where I met up with Las Vegas native Brian Paco Alvarez. An anthropologist and talented artist himself, we talk all things art and culture. We are here for a very specific reason, this beautiful metal artwork back here, this sculpture. This is my pride and joy in downtown Las Vegas. It's the second most important work of art ever commissioned in Las Vegas history. The first one is the flashlight at UNLV. These are site specific specific works of art. Luis Varela Rico uh, actually uh, created this. He's a local artist originally from Mexico. His mother's very locally Irma. famous, Irma. The beautiful thing about the sculpture is it's representative of the Paiute baskets. The Paiutes were renowned, are renowned for their amazing baskets that they created. And it also represents, it's, it's made of aluminum and it also represents the railroad because the railroad is just a few feet away. So you've got this juxtaposition of, of aluminum and steel and this, the, the delicateness of the, uh, of the Paiute basket. So we have um, Radio Symmetry by Luis. Also in downtown Las Vegas, we paid a visit to the Martinez family. Three generations now run what is considered the oldest Mexican restaurant in the city of Las Vegas, Doña Maria Tamales. Now, real quick, I need to say, because this is actually your grandma's recipe, abuela's it's recipe. It's correct, it's correct. Abuela, it's correct, my grandma. And he taught you how to make them. Si. Sí. Yes. 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 I don't know how to make nothing. No tamales, no rice, no, no beans. And he showed me how. Yeah, she learning, she learning. Thanks to him, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. 
And that little six, seven year old girl who said she wanted to be, you know, a businesswoman and open up her own restaurant, you did it. So proud of you. <laughs> and, and she continues to do this and she likes it. The American dream and, and again so many of our parents came to this country to give us a better life and look. That's correct. Exactly. That's correct. Exactly. And we are very grateful. Everybody can do it. Yeah. If they want to do it, they can do it. Si se puede. Bienvenidos a la Bienvenidos a Las Vegas is partially funded by a grant from WNET and will air in conjunction with American Historia, a three-part docu-series executive produced and hosted by the multi-talented John Leguizamo. Take a look. This is my chance to dig deep on the real history of Latinos. We're going to fill in the parts of our history that were lost all the way from the ancient Olmecs. Latinos were here long before the United States existed to the Latinos who helped build this great nation. With the strike and with the boycott, we were trying to get farm workers basic human rights. That's a lot of ground to cover, but don't worry, because I got you. Representation matters. American Historia and Bienvenidos a Las Vegas will both air in early 2024. Thank you to Maria Silva for her reporting and thank you for watching. For any of the resources discussed on this show, go to VegasPBS.org slash Nevada Week and I'll see you next week on Nevada Week.